They say data is the new oil, but refining it is what makes it valuable. Data analysis. Learning data analysis is one of the best things you can do. If I could go back in time, I would not do it. <laughs> And I'll explain in a bit. But if I had to learn it all over again, this is exactly how I would do it. I'll break this video up into three parts. Mindset, programming, and data visualization. And if you're not in college or university, great, this video is for you. It might be a bit more challenging, but if you're willing to put in the work, you can definitely become a data analyst all by yourself. In fact, if I could go back in time, I don't know if I would have gone to university at all. Let's get into it. Part one mindset. Data analysts and scientists just think differently. We approach the world in a more analytical way and I can honestly say that my day-to-day -day life has changed since I became a data analyst. Data analyst. Data analyst from Southern America. Step 1.1 adopt an analytical mindset. And what I mean by this is that in every situation, annoyance or issue you face in life, there's an optimal decision you can make. You just need to find it. Whether it takes you one minute, one hour or one day, if you're able to see the data in front of you, you're able to make the best decision based on that data. And a lot of people ask me, does being analytical mean you have to be good at math? No, not at all. If you're good at math, you're probably analytical. But if you're analytical, you don't have to necessarily be good at math. Being analytical simply means applying logical reasoning to find out more about something. It means asking the right questions to bring down a problem to its very essence. And I'll give you an example of being analytical in the real world. Whenever I need to make a big purchase, like a TV, washing machine, or a car or whatever, I always compare a lot of different models. I compare the cons and pros of each, the quality, the functionalities, and the price, so I can eventually pick the best value for money. That's being analytical. And that brings me to step 1.2 of the data mindset. Don't trust, verify. In my seven years of being a data analyst, I've had so many managers come up to me telling me my dashboard is wrong or the reports are not correct while the data is 100% correct. Or even worse, sometimes managers would come up to me and ask me if I could leave just a little bit, a little part of the data set out of the data. Just skew the data a little bit so it looks like we're doing better than we actually are. And that day I realized that if I don't verify the data myself, I will never know if that data is actually telling the truth. And this applies to everything in your life. From the ads you see on TV, the articles you read on the internet, and what politicians are telling you about the economy. They throw around all these fancy terms and numbers, but you gotta understand, numbers don't lie, people do. So as a data analyst, don't trust, verify. And as soon as I internalized this fact, I really started developing my analytical thinking, both in my professional journey and in my personal life. Part two, learn programming. I can't say it won't be challenging, but it will be absolutely worth it. Step 2.1. Pick your first tool. Well, actually, if you're absolutely new to data analytics, you might actually want to start with the fundamentals of data analysis first. Step 2.0, get familiar with data analytics. And there is a really easy way to get started with the basics of data analysis that I only wish I had when I started my journey. There's a free course by IBM called the Introduction to Data Analytics. It's hosted on Coursera a paid platform, but they have a seven day free trial, which is more than enough to finish this course. So if you're just starting out your journey into data analytics, this is a great way to start. Back to step 2.1, pick your first tool. It's simple. When you're just starting out, there's actually only two tools you really should consider, Excel and SQL. They're both tools that can be used to extract data from data sources or queries, to combine data and to transform that same data. Simply put, if I could go back in time, this is the way I would approach it. If you already have a job, but it's not data related, then I would go for Excel because there's a very big chance your company is already using Excel. Maybe you're already using Excel. Excel is a perfect stepping stone into some basic programming, data manipulation, and even some data visualization. Get good at it. Start using it in your day-to-day -day work. Get familiar with formulas like fee lookup, if statements, sum if, start using pivot tables, and maybe even build some graphs in a report or a dashboard that you can use for yourself, maybe your team or your manager. And if you don't have a job yet and you want to get straight into data analysis, then I would recommend picking SQL first. SQL is one of the simplest programming languages used to talk to databases. Basically just writing simple code to extract, combine and transform data. Next to Excel, it is the second most requested skill in data analysis jobs. Again, a big thanks to Luke Barus for coming up with this graph. A free resource to get good at Excel is excelpracticeonline.com. And, and a great resource to become a pro at SQL is learnsql.com. 
It took me way too much time to learn SQL properly, and I underestimated how important SQL actually is to become a data analyst. As I said, it's the second most requested skill for data analyst jobs. So if you want to learn or practice SQL, check out LearnSQL.com. They have a set of over 65 hands-on SQL courses, and it's a 100% online experience. No need to install anything on your device, everything happens through your web browser. All LearnSQL.com courses are interactive and based on real-life business scenarios, meaning you'll be writing SQL queries and seeing the results instantly. LearnSQL.com reached out to me to ask if they could sponsor this video, but I only said yes after I took a look through their platform, I checked out their courses and realized this is exactly what I needed when I was starting my data analyst journey. So of course I'm going to recommend it to you. Plus, they're letting me give away a great offer if you click the link in the description and choose one of their learning paths in SQL, PostgreSQL or T-SQL. The best way to learn programming is by doing. Once you've mastered your first tool, it's time to get into the more advanced data analytics. Step 2.2 pick your programming language. And for this one, let me start straight with the resources. Ever wanted to say that you've studied at Harvard? Harvard? <laughs> studied at Harvard? Well, now you can. There are three data science courses that you can take online from Harvard, absolutely free and online. But before you start with those courses, I would recommend picking one programming language and learning it deeply. And it's really simple. As a data analyst, you only have to choose between two programming languages. R and Python. R is mainly a programming language focused on statistical analysis, while Python is a general purpose language that happens to be very good for data analysis as well. Meaning if you get good at Python for data analysis, it might open up the world for a lot of new job opportunities. I would recommend installing the Anaconda distribution for Python and then installing Spider as your IDE or Integrated Development Environment for programming in Python. To learn Python, you can go to this free website called learnpython.org where each lesson explains a basic concept after which you have to apply this concept to a problem. Again, learn by doing. And once you know how to use Python and you've adopted this analytical mindset, it's time for you to apply your data analysis skills to your personal life. Step 2.3, create a personal project. The first thing I would do is check out Reddit at R datasets to see if there are any interesting datasets for you to analyze. Although practice data sets are fine to grow your skills, you need some real life data to actually use it for your personal projects. Another thing I would do is learn how to scrape data from the web yourself. You could start scraping data from job portal websites to analyze what kind of skills or tools are most in demand for data analysts. Here's a nice article on how to get started scraping data from the job platform indeed.com. And here are nine other examples of personal projects you could start yourself. And once you get the hang of it, these personal projects are the best way to grow your data analysis skills while building your portfolio and actually building something valuable for yourself, all while getting a taste of what it's like working as a data analyst. Go ahead, pick a topic you're passionate about and ideally start a project where you get to use all your skills and tools from web scraping, data extraction and transformation with SQL, data analysis with Python, and then visualizing the data. Part three, data visualization. Scraping, transforming, and analyzing the data is one thing, but conveying a message or telling a story with the data is a whole nother thing. Our brains don't really like numbers and statistics, but we do like visuals and stories. And this is where the ability to create effective visualizations comes in. Showing that you can create visualizations that are both effective and visually appealing will go a long way towards impressing your potential employer. Step 3.1, pick your BI tool. There are many business intelligence tools to pick from as a data analyst, but if I could go back in time, I would only consider the following two. Power BI or Tableau. Power BI is part of the Microsoft stack, so it works smoothly with Excel and SharePoint. It has its own DAX programming language used to manipulate datasets. It's not the most user-friendly language, but it does its job. And there's a free version of Power BI to use to grow your skills. And Tableau is a BI tool with more extensive data visualization capabilities than Power BI. It also has a nice no-coding intuitive drag and drop way of doing business analysis. And you can practice Tableau for free as well on public.tableau.com. For learning how to use both Tableau and Power BI, I would recommend DataCamp. There's free courses you can do and also paid ones. Congrats. By this point, you're well on your way to becoming a data analyst. On how to actually land a job as a data analyst, I would recommend checking out my other video where I explain how you go from beginner to actually landing your first job as a data analyst. One last thing, and this might sound strange. I don't want you to subscribe to my channel. Seriously. As I said at the beginning of this video, if I could go back in time, 
I would never have chosen to become a data analyst in the first place. Because it took me seven years of working as a data analyst to realize that I don't want to work in an office for the rest of my life. I realized instead of climbing the corporate ladder, I'd rather pursue my own creative endeavors, scratch that entrepreneurial itch I have. I realized I want to achieve personal freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom, and learned that data analysis might not guarantee actually me achieving that. So if you want to learn more about data analysis and growing your data skills, I would recommend subscribing to Luke Barus, Kenji, and Alex the Analyst instead of me. They're probably the most brilliant data YouTubers out there. But if you want to learn how to create a life of freedom, personal freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom, and you want to see my journey of creating a life of freedom, where I share every single lesson I learned through my YouTube videos. Then you might want to stick around and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.